Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Andrew Brankley, and welcome to today's video on the origin and evolution of the static risk assessment tools. Learning how a tool was developed helps you identify some of its strengths and limitations, and it also inoculates you against ridiculous claims about the tool. For example, that Static 99R and Static 2002R just appeared out of nowhere. Oh, go get a haircut, you beatnik. You're not helping. Our story begins in the mid-1990s with a seminal meta-analysis by Carl Hansen and Monique... Uh-oh, we don't have a picture for Boussier. Um, hey you. Me? Yeah, you. Okay. I, um... Oh, need you to put on this wig and get in there. Okay, um... Wait! No way! It looks dumb! I don't care. It's pink! Get in there! Alright, alright, I'll go. But I better have a good part later. <clears throat> Where was I? Ah, yes! Carl Hansen and Monique Boussier's 1996 meta-analysis examined factors that predicted sexual recidivism. They took on the monstrous task of synthesizing information from 61 separate studies, representing over 23,000 participants. Results were really quite fascinating, as they provide strong empirical guidance for what may or may not explain sexual offending. Now, although many researchers and professionals comment upon things like denial or childhood issues of sexual abuse, these factors were not associated with sexual offending. Factors with strong associations provided a pool of potential items. A year later in 1997, Carl Hansen published a government report describing the construction of his first risk assessment tool for sexual offending. Using the pool of potential variables from the meta-analysis, Hansen set two rules for selection. The variables had to have an average correlation of at least 0.1 with sexual offense recidivism, and one should be able to score them using commonly available information, such as offense history, police reports, or demographics. The predictive validity of the six potential items was tested through stepwise regression in seven development samples, and then replicated in an eighth validation sample. Four items provided non-redundant information on risk and formed the Rapid Risk Assessment for Sex Offense Recidivism, or the RAZOR. Hmm, RAZOR. Kind of like Occam's RAZOR. Here I Sharp, come. scientific. Wait, what? Wait, what? Here's RAZOR! You're kidding me. What? You know, RAZOR, like... No. Come on. No. This is good. Urgh. You happy now? All right, we're done. I got people to teach. Where was I? Oh, yes. In our story, Carl Hansen has been working along developing the razor. But what I haven't mentioned yet is that he wasn't alone. Oh. In England, David Thornton of Her Majesty's Prison Service created a similar tool the Structured Anchored Clinical Judgment Minimum, mm -hmm. or SAC-J-MIN. Oh. Legend has it that Hansen and Thornton discussed their two tools at an annual ATSA conference. Razor and SAC-J-MIN have some overlap in items, but not in all. Like Razor, SAC-J-MIN was intended for screening purposes. It contained items tapping into sex crime specific problems, but it placed a considerable weight on non-sexual criminal history, that is, general criminality. Razor almost exclusively targets sex crime specific problems. So they wondered what would happen if you combined the two, retain the shared items and add unique items from each scale. Through a comparison of the three scales, they found that the combined scale was better. They called this scale Static 99. Static. After the classic name for the type of information used to code each item and 99 
after the Jay-Z song about the number of problems you had before the scale came along. I got 99 pounds. Oh, or, or maybe it was just the year? Yeah, it was probably the year. Static 99 quickly became popular, with routine applications in jurisdictions as diverse as Sweden, Texas, and Taiwan. Replication studies have found that Static 99 shows levels of predictive accuracy similar to those found in the development samples. Nevertheless, in 2002, Hansen and Thornton published an optimized version of the scale. In a way, it was like the $6 million man. They learned so much in developing Static, they were ready to rebuild it. But uh, they still worked for the government, so they didn't have a $6 million budget. They removed two items that caused scoring issues and added five new items to increase both predictive validity and conceptual clarity, helping evaluators understand which items were tapping into which potential causes for sexual offending. The new scale, Static 2002, was similar to Static 99 in prediction of sexual recidivism. 2002, however, was a better predictor of violent recidivism and performed more consistently across different settings. In the mid-2000s, Hansen started mentoring a student named Micah Helmus, who has since become a prolific researcher, making many significant contributions to the development of the static tools, specifically the importance of sample type and the revision of the age items. In her master's thesis, she combined 29 samples to renorm static 99. One of the factors that strongly influenced recidivism rates was age at release. Now, you may be confused as age was already an item, but the way the item was coded failed to pick up meaningful changes in risk. It's, it's a complicated and fascinating issue because it involves mapping numbers onto relationships that we can't see, but are real nonetheless. This area, called measurement modeling, is actually a particular interest of mine, so please, let me explain. Age and criminal behavior have a strong relationship. Not because getting more candles on your birthday cake makes you less likely to offend, but because age is a marker for many complex changes throughout the lifespan that affect risk. The relationship between age and risk is represented on this two-sided arrow by increase in age mirroring the color transition of red to blue, representing risk. Static 99's attempt to capture this relationship was overly simplistic. It's true that people between 18 and 25 are the most risky, but there are many risk-relevant differences between people older than 25. Static 2002 provided a more nuanced model. However, you can see that the yellow 2 and green 1 levels are likely underestimating risk for those individuals when you look over at the arrow. Informed by the large 29-sample meta-analytic data set, Helmus and colleagues introduced new age levels that made finer distinctions, especially for middle-aged people. In other words, risk continues to remain high for young people through into their 20s. In the late 30s, you begin to see meaningful reductions in offending that continue until your 60s, where it evens off. Static scales with the R at the end of the year indicate the presence of the revised age item. These revised scales outperformed the original versions with older adults. Now, we have reached the present version of the scales and the end of our video. But stay tuned as their evolution is ongoing. I hope you found this video useful in understanding the origin and evolution of the static tools. Please feel free to share this video for training or teaching purposes. I'm happy for you to use the video or slides themselves in your own presentations. I just ask that you leave the slide intact and reference it accordingly. Also, feel free to contact me if you have any questions or comments. If you liked this video, then I hope you check out my other videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel.